Do you think you remember something one way, but now it's not that way at all? Perhaps you've seen a movie or a logo, and now that movie just doesn't exist anymore, or the logo has been changed. Confused? You're not alone. So everyone's talking about the situation called the Mandela Effect. But today you'll hear who and what insanity is behind the Mandela Effect and why. For those of you who don't know what the Mandela Effect is, what rock have you been living under? The Mandela Effect is a phenomenon where things are seemingly undoubtedly one way and large groups of people remember it that way, but now it's changed. What are the most common ideas about what is causing the Mandela Effect? Some people think humans are stupid and they made all of this up. Some people think it's converging timelines. Some people think humans built a time machine and someone's screwing with our timeline. And some people think a black hole. Yeah, dude, a black hole is causing all this trouble. And some think it's something far more nefarious. Yeah, I just said word nefarious. Unfortunately for us, you can't talk about the Mandela effect without talking about some heavy science here. So what is actually causing this? I mean, the organization reportedly at the very center of the Mandela effect is CERN. Wait, CERN? Like, you're talking about the organization responsible for the Large Hadron Collider? You mean the organization that basically rams particles together at, like, lightning fast speeds to track the results? So this is taken directly from CERN's website. Another way of revealing extra dimensions would be through the production of microscopic black holes. What exactly we would detect would depend on the number of extra dimensions, the mass of the black hole, the size of the dimensions, and the energy at which the black hole occurs. If micro black holes do appear in the collisions created by the LHC, they would disintegrate rapidly. They would decay into standard model or supersymmetric particles, creating events. So this is like really, really vague, yeah. right? But wait, wait, but they just said creating events, right? This is kind of weird, but it reminds me of that movie, Event Horizon. By it, definition, though, an Event Horizon is a black hole, right? In layman's terms, it is the point of no return, where the gravitational pull becomes so great as to make escape impossible, even for light. And this would include anything and everything, even time. Okay, so why would anyone study this on Earth? This is the big question. Wouldn't you be worried that creating a little black hole, it might just keep eating everything until it destroys the like everything? So this is exactly what I want to know, and most of the scientists out there also want to know, including Stephen Hawking. And he has been asking the same question. He even said the God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. I mean, this is Stephen Hawking saying this, <laughs> right. right? They're like doing this on Earth. What effects could this possibly have? I mean, who knows? Yeah, and that particle is also known as the Higgs boson. They call it the God particle because they think it is like the original matter. Sum it up, I'm thinking antimatter, like black hole. Exactly. What is really antimatter? Well, and funnier than that, if you go to where CERN is on Google Maps, it says antimatter anti factory. <laughs> This is crazy. So one milligram of antimatter is equivalent to 1,000 atomic bombs. Yeah. And so I heard that one grain of rice size antimatter is equivalent to 30,000 Hiroshima bombs. If you have the stuff the size of like a baseball, dude, I mean, this thing could potentially wipe out half the solar system. What the hell are they doing here on Earth, you know? It's like, that's the crazy thing. The best part is Ben yesterday was telling me, he's like, dude, they're trying to move antimatter in a van. <laughs> Still can't get over that substance. There's the article right here, yeah. got it. Some conspiracies say that CERN's whole purpose was to open a portal to another dimension. From CERN's point of view, they're trying to understand our universe and the Big Bang and everything else and how, what created life, basically, right? Right. But some say they're actually opening a portal to hell. Okay, so this just got kind of a little weird and for scientifically minded people, they're probably like, who are these two knuckleheads? How do we know that's actually true? Like, what's selling us on this? So CERN's mascot is a Hindu goddess called Shiva, who is also the goddess of destruction. 
There's a big fat statue of her right outside of their office. I mean, come on, destruction? So, like, this is crazy. So along with that, CERN's logo is causing many groups to throw their hands in the air and not the type that's waving them like they just don't care. When I looked at this logo, I'm a brand manager, CERN's logo looks mysteriously like 666, 666. and 666 specifically in chaos. I couldn't find who the original maker of the logo was, but there is a website, uh, it looks like it's dedicated to science called Two Mosquitoes, and the way that they explained the logo was that they tried to model it actually after uh, one of the accelerators. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is if you look at that accelerator, they were worried about making it look exactly like the accelerator because that would make it look like a black hole too much and they thought that that would be not good. Whoa. But would you rather have it look like a black hole or 666? Okay, so I'll try to explain the theory on how the timelines are being disrupted by all of this. So even Stephen Hawking said that this could cause space and time to collapse which is actually what we could be seeing with the Mandela effect. Oh. Collapsing timelines and other parallel dimensions, which is why some people remember the old timeline and some people have the memory of the new timeline. There's a Harvard University theorist named Lisa Randall who actually talks about other dimensions that may exist close to our own familiar reality. Can you speak English? Because I'm a designer, not an astrophysicist. What the heck does that even mean, dude? <laughs> okay. So in a nutshell, she is saying that in another space-time, there exists right here, right now, another dimension, but we just can't see it. When there is a shift in gravity, it's a possibility that a rift in our time space would open up and you would be able to see into a different time space. Right. So this is exactly what CERN is trying to do. They're trying to create rifts in time space to send particles from this dimension into another dimension and vice versa, which could cause crazy repercussions in our own timeline. Well, I think this is the cause of the Mandela effect, and I think the Mona Lisa is a really good example of how things could be affected. Do you want to talk a little bit about the Mona Lisa? Yeah, so um, this will be in our other episode too, but uh, the Mona Lisa basically, growing up, I mean, I was fascinated just like everyone else. I was a painter, I went to art school for illustration. There was such a huge discussion in the past over whether she's smiling or not. And so people would go to look at the Mona Lisa for hours until they could finally see her smiling, but now, when you go and you look at the Mona Lisa, there's nothing to debate anymore. She's that debate has totally been wiped off the face of the planet. No one's talking about what she's doing. They're still fascinated with the painting, but that discussion on that smirk or that smile or that neutral look that she had is no longer a thing. Yeah, she's just she's smiling. smiling. She's just smiling. Yeah, and this is really weird because that was such a huge discussion when I was young. And it's like almost over time, all of a sudden it just like, whoop, switched and she's smiling now. So what we think the cause of the Mandela effect is, is, th is that CERN is actually playing a lot with different particles and science, trying to create a black hole or an event that causes an opening in a dimensional field that is actually messing with our timeline. And there are different timelines in these different dimensions. What happens when you start playing with that? Okay, so Ben, there's going to be a lot of people that are like, well, you guys didn't research this enough. How do you yeah. know? Why do you think that That's they're, true. you know, blah, 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 worshiping these things of destruction? I mean, what do you think? Like, I've read some articles where scientists are basically trying to make fun of people that are really concerned about this. But you and I both read that, like, even Tyson and Hawking are really worried they about are. what they're doing yeah. there. Is this really irresponsible? You so know? Again, you guys are probably thinking, you know, you guys are not scientists. No, I think to understand science, you have to have a broader mind. You have to use tools available to you that may be more metaphysical in nature, right? Why are we always trying to study destruction? Right, that's the other thing too. Other scientists are also coming out really explaining their concern. It's like, you guys just went ahead and do this. You didn't take a vote of the international community of the world and say, hey, yeah. Can, is it okay if we build a facility and study black holes? It's like... And who's talking about the dangers that this could potentially right. bring to our environment? Right. Never mind the talks of whether they're actually trying to open a gate or not. I mean... And I think the other thing too is that, I mean, here's these guys trying to figure out what the original source of matter is and they're blowing up. They have to blow up each layer, layer by layer of like these particle dimensions, I guess you could say, until they find, figure out what the most 
microscopic source of matter is, and that's what they're trying to do, which is, in essence, creating a black hole. And what we know of black holes is well, very dangerous. It's very, well, it's very limited. Yeah. What, what opening that dimension, even if you're just playing around, what that could do, no one understands this enough, no matter how good you are right. at math or science or whatever, to know what the repercussions are of opening a black hole and what it could do to these timelines. I mean, I think we, as, as like the human race, should really be concerned. And, you know, we're, we're protesting so much about all these things, but this is the one thing that I feel like is the most dangerous part, but we're not protesting this because we feel like we don't know enough about it. And, you know, if the scientists say it's okay, then it must be okay. Yeah, and scientists are human. We didn't just kind of throw CERN under the bus here. There was a lot of research that went behind why research. we're pointing at CERN related to the Mandela effect. It goes into a lot of things that people are talking about, different infographics that have been posted in the underground, so to speak. There's a lot of reasons why we're talking about this right now. We really want to know what you think. So please, um, please like and subscribe and follow us and uh, watch our other episode on the Mandela effect examples. Also guys, is there any other topics you would like us to cover? Let us know in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you guys out on the edge. Hey, did you like this episode? Let us know in the comments. If you want to see more videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and if you want to watch even more awesome content, subscribe to Rise.TV where we have a full catalog of shows. See you next time.